So today we're joined by Dr. Ujwal Rathor, who is a new CRIM uh, fellowship recipient, and he works at the Gladstone Institutes in San Francisco. Thanks a lot for joining us, Ujwal. Thanks for having me. So let's start off by talking a little bit about, um, just in simple terms, what project you're working on. My work is focused on finding targets, uh, you know, for finding targets which can be used to develop an HIV cure. Uh, what I do is, uh, imagine that at your home, you have, you have some intruders. And, you know, they, those intruders just stay hidden somewhere at your home. And you, you know that they, you know, those, in, you know, you, things are getting disappeared from the kitchen and from other places. But, you know, you don't know what those intruders really need to stay hidden and to stay inside your home. But you just want to, you know, uh, uh, get rid of those intruders. So what happens, is, so what you can do to, you know, find out to get rid of those intruders is what you can do is, you can figure to think, you know, oh, maybe they need a blanket. And if I get rid of all blankets from home, maybe then, you know, they will go out, you know, we can push them out from the home. But similarly, what happens is when HIV virus enters human cells to stay hidden, it needs certain, uh, certain co components from human cells to stay hidden. So what I, my work is focused on is trying to figure out what HIV virus needs to keep stay hidden inside, uh, inside the human cells. So are uh, you talking about um, 20,000 human genes and you, and you want to go through systematically um, to, to people who are not familiar with the technique you're using, that sounds like it would take a very long time or it would be a lot of work to take those out, you know, surgically one by one to see what the effect is. But you're using a tool that people have probably heard of. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that tool. Yeah, that's a very good question. So I'm using a tool which is essentially... Uh, molecular scissor. It's called CRISPR-Cas9. With these specific molecular scissors, what we can do is we can cut specific genes out from the human genome. So what you can do is basically, essentially, uh, you can tell the tool that, uh, you know, you want to cut a sp one specific gene uh, in, in one human cell, and then that gene uh, uh, gets destroyed, and, uh, you know, you don't have that protein anymore in the cell. But what you can do is, you instead of doing this for one gene at a time, you can do 20,000 genes in parallel you know, in one simple single tube. Right. So what made you interested in studying HIV in the first place? It's a lifelong battle. Once you get infected with HIV, uh, there is no cure for it. You have to take medication every single day, and which is not feasible for a large section of society. Right now, there are close to 40 million people infected with HIV. And then if you think of, you know, people will be in all kinds of different situations and think, you know, we can't imagine that everyone will be able to take a pill every day for the rest of their life. So what attracted me towards this field initially was the difficulty of the problem. But then what, uh, you know, makes me excited about is, is the need, the need to find a solution to the problem. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, you know, obviously HIV research has a lot of challenges in it, but you know, we all have to get, you know, our rewards and our little bits of excitement along the way. Um, what are the kinds of things that get you excited, you know, just on a day-to-day -day basis in the work you do? Often a discussion with colleagues, you know, that's, that keeps me excited about it because uh, when something is unsolved, everyone has some idea about it, you know, how this must be working, right? But then, you know, actually the ability to actually go and test those ideas, that, that really keeps me excited about it. And you talked about uh, your colleagues and that community of, you know, people who are all working on that same problem. Um, has that played a role during your life? Like, how did you decide to become a scientist in the first place? I grew up in India, uh, in Delhi, and I studied in a Hindi medium school, uh, in a public school where very few people were thinking of taking science as a career. But uh, uh, I remember asking uh, my teachers a lot of questions about, uh, you know, uh, uh, questions which they didn't have answers to. And they always suggested me that if you want to find answers to the, these questions, what you have to do is you have to become a scientist. You have to become a researcher. You have to find answers of, to, of some of these questions yourself. But I was curious and I think uh, I started asking a lot of questions. And uh, then I think my desire to find answers uh, made me a scientist. So now you are a scientist. Uh, you've just uh, received a Matilde Krim Fellowship from AMFAR. How do you think that's going to help you along or, or change how you do things in your career? 
I think it's a real privilege. Uh, my mother, uh, she got married when she was 16 years old and uh, she couldn't finish her school. Uh, but she she was uh, she was really behind the uh, she was really the force behind me becoming a scientist. She really valued education, and I think the way this fellowship is going to help me is uh, it's going to give me a platform to move to my next step as an independent researcher. It is going to help me transition to an independent position. Uh, it's going to give me uh, it's going to give me a platform where I can really put things in a, on a strict timeline to, you know, uh, move to the next step. And uh, collaboration, you know, is an important part, as you already talked about in any scientist's career. And you've talked about, you know, moving on through the next steps of your career with the fellowship. And, you know, the next step is independence. But where do you see your career going ultimately? What, what would you like to see for your career? Looking at things from both HIV cure perspective as well as from the perspective of HIV vaccine. So my PhD was in HIV vaccine design, and my postdoctorate is in an HIV cure. So these are the two things which, when you, when you think about ending this forty-year-long HIV pandemic, these are the two things you think about. You know, develop a vaccine which, uh, you know, uh, which you know prevents new infection. Every year there are two million new HIV, close to two million new HIV infections happening, and then. You also think about, you know, that there are so many, even if you find a vaccine, there's so many people who are living with HIV, right? You still need a cure for them. Well, great. Um, you know, ending the HIV AIDS pandemic through research is exactly what Amphar is all about. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wish you all the best in your career and can't wait to see some of the results as they come out. Thank you. Thanks for having me.